Welcome to Parenting Decoded, a podcast for practical approaches to parenting. I'm Mary Eschen. In this podcast, I'm going to cover issues relating to money with middle and high schoolers. I will go over how to give money and how much, when to give money, and how to set up responsible money habits, including how to use an ATM card, checking account, and credit cards. Money is a big challenge for us all, and at this stage, your high schooler or middle schooler is at a huge crossroads with learning life skills. Dealing with money is a much-neglected skill during these years, yet they are the most crucial years to allow as many affordable mistakes as possible. This makes money a prime target for small mistakes now to avoid big mistakes later. If you know someone who can't manage money as an adult, I'm going to guess their parents didn't teach them much about it. Might have even given in to every whim just to keep them happy when they were young. Hey, that adult might even be you. If you listen to my podcast about money for younger kids, you'll have already heard how to start a small budget for vacations and special events that I call a trinket budget. We're going to expand on that concept greatly by including more of the day-to-day expenses our kids encounter, not just vacations and special events. With older kids, I want to help introduce money concepts so that by the time they graduate from high school, they know about budgeting, credit cards, and debt. I'm even going to show you a way to tie in getting chores done, which is such a bonus. You want to launch a financially responsible child into the world so that you won't be paying their bills for the rest of your life. Let's get started. Middle school. Start budgeting using what I call the setting limits method. During this phase, you want your child to really understand that there are limits to what they can spend instead of just opening your wallet and spending your money. Didn't it get you in pre-COVID days when your kids said that they wanted to go to the movies with friends and you had to fork over money on the spot, not only for the movie, but also the popcorn and the drink? It was for their happiness, right? That parent guilt just gets to us when it's done in the moment. All practical thought sometimes just goes poof right out of our heads. Or how about your kid going to Starbucks and getting a frappuccino and a snack because they're hungry? That can easily be a $15 transaction if you're not careful. I had one friend whose child went to Starbucks every day without a care to the family budget. Another friend was conned into buying extravagant birthday presents for their kids' friends because mom and dad hadn't set a reasonable spending limit. So here's what we're going to do. You will set your limit of what you will give them by category. You will also set a money allowance that's in an unlimited category that they can do with what they want. Have a family meeting or a private meeting with each kid if you have kids of lots of different ages. Just do this all up front with thought and planning. No puppy dog eyes as they're leaving for some event. Feel free to have your kids help decide on what has limits and how much. The important thing here is that they start to learn that there are limits and it's helpful to know what they are up front so no one's surprised. Here are some ideas for some different types of things that you can talk about, to, but keep in mind that some of these will only apply after we move out of COVID time, which we're in now. School supplies, birthday gifts for friends, clothes, Starbucks or other snacks like boba tea or something, activity supplies for sports, music, things like that, like warm-up suits, instruments, reeds or drumsticks, related equipment, activity feel fees for monthly, quarterly, or by season if they're in sports or clubs or educational activities, school lunch money, movie tickets. You're going to add up what you think is reasonable for you to pay for and give them that amount per month or when it's appropriate. Some things you'll still have to pay for that you can't quite define ahead of time, like how many birthday presents are needed per month, but you can establish an amount of what you will add to the birthday budget per birthday. Here's some more specific ideas about what a sample parent could allocate. One Starbucks drink per week of not more than $5. School supplies of $50 per year. Lunch money for school lunches for two lunches per week. One movie ticket per month. Birthday gift budget of $25 per gift. Clothes budget of $25 per month. 
Keep in mind this is for middle schoolers who don't have a lot of freedom to roam. Put this into this whatever system you can. Some parents will put in budgets for sports equipment, like $75 for new basketball shoes, and your kid can add their own money if they want to get the new Air Jordans. Maybe they'll be willing to get last year's model instead of getting the $100 version. You won't care. You'll just be paying $75. For me, one of the first limits I set was for school supplies. For years prior, we would head to Office Depot with the school shopping list in hand, and my boys would convince me that they needed all new this and that. I was such a pushover. I caved just about every time. Well, once I learned budgeting, I set a limit of $50 per kid per year. I met with them and explained that they could use the money to purchase any supplies they needed, but that it was a yearly budget. They could choose to reuse what they already had, or buy all new stuff, pencils, binders, papers, didn't matter. I let them know it was all up to them. I loved them, and I was sure that they'd learn to make good choices over time. However, I also let them know that if they didn't use all of the $50, they were welcome to use it for anything else. This incented them to be conservative and reuse much of what they chose not to in previous years. Yay! I want to confess, in previous years, I had probably been spending about $75 on new supplies, so this was a total win for me and for them. I had a friend who, after her two daughters constantly overran their data budget for their phone plans, switched them to pay-as-you-go plans and gave them each a budget of $15 a month. It was amusing for mom to watch how quickly her daughters used up that $15 and learned how to look for Wi-Fi hotspots or wait until they got home to the house Wi-Fi instead of just constantly streaming data to their phones whenever they felt like it. Another win for mom. It's awesome. Now that we've talked about a simple budget, I want to talk about allowance. That's the unrestricted money we give to our kids that they can spend on whatever they'd like. How much do you give them and when is the question? As much as you think is appropriate and can afford. Could be a dollar per week or $10 a month. It doesn't matter, but be consistent. I used monthly. The amounts can change as your kids get older. I usually gave them a quote-unquote raise on their birthdays. My calculation was $1 for each year they were old per month. Yep, not much by some kids' standards. But that's the point. You want kids to have to stretch and think about where they're going to spend that precious money and how they can maybe save some on their other budget items that they can move money around into their unrestricted funds area. Like if they find an older pair of Air Jordans for $50 somewhere, they can pocket the extra $25 to use on something else, maybe snacks at Starbucks that you're no longer funding. You also want to encourage them to work to earn extra money by doing extra jobs around the house or put out flyers or post on next door to offer to help neighbors with things like dog walking, picking up mail, cleaning up dog poop, or watering plants while neighbors are on vacation. A girlfriend's son wanted a new cool skateboard, so he worked his buns off to earn the money for it. That mom posted a list of what she'd pay for her kids to do her jobs if they wanted to earn money at their house. All this was communicated in the open so that no one was surprised by any of it. No whining and begging for stuff. Give them love and empathy if they don't like it. Oh, I know it's hard to earn money. I'm so sorry. Let me know if you'd like some ideas. I sure love you. What about giving? When kids are young and we give them allowance, we ask them to allocate some of their money to a share jar. We still want to encourage the share concept at this age, and we can budget this item and put it in a restricted category that they aren't allowed to move into their unrestricted spend area. They need to share it with a church or a charity, no exceptions. If they get birthday or holiday gifts, help them allocate some of that money into their share budget as well as to their savings account. Keep modeling for your kids your own giving and have discussions about how to help others with their share money. One last thought before I head into the area of high school budgeting. There's a super cool app that you can use for any age, but I think it would be really great to use for middle schoolers. It's called Green Light. It allows you to set up a debit card that's controlled and monitored by you 
and used by your kids like a real debit card with restrictions on what stores and what amounts can be spent at certain places. It's $4.95 a month, so it does cost a bit, but it could be a good transition tool prior to high school. And I don't get paid to say that. I just think it's a really cool idea that a, a dad suggested to me that they use in their family. Now, moving along to high school, every parent should jump at the chance to really step up budgeting with high schoolers. This is a crucial learning ground that will be backed up by affordable mistakes and really set up your kids for independence in college and beyond. Here are the basics. Step one, set up a checking account in their name with real checks and an ATM card that you can electronically transfer money to and from. It'll probably be an account where one parent is a cosigner. That's fine. You want your kid to swipe that ATM card and get used to our electronic payment-oriented society. If they run out of money, the ATM card will stop them, unlike a credit card. You can also set them up on Venmo, a popular payment app with students. Don't be afraid to let them use it. Have them write checks occasionally, too. Some kids really struggle to establish a decent signature, especially since cursive is a dying art in school these days. Step two, decide as many things as possible that your kid can pay for with your money. Yep, your money, like we did in the middle school exercise, but way more detailed. Hey, you pay for all these things anyway, so we might as well leverage that money to work for future independence. We'll call this the income side of the budget. What kind of things should be added to the list? Well, obviously, we're going to do all the things that we had from the middle school, but we're also going to do private lesson fees, things like academic tutoring, Sports, music, dance, whatever, sports fees, school sports, club teams, travel for sports, lunches and meals like we talked about, but even other meals besides lunch, college application process and testing fees, prom tickets and expenses, grooming, things like haircuts, nails, pedicures, that kind of stuff, student fees for things like yearbooks and school spirit gear. Step three, calculate things on the deduction side of the budget. Step two is the income side of the budget. Now we have deduction side. Some families will have their teens pay for things like car insurance, the data plan for their phone, gas for using the family car on trips with friends, that sort of stuff. My kids had a monthly deduction for both their car insurance and data plan. Sure, I could have afforded it, but I wanted them to have some skin in the game. Where did they get the money for those deductions? They could earn extra or use savings if they had to. It didn't matter to me. That wasn't my problem. Here's the kicker. I talked about incorporating chores into this budgeting process, and here's what you need to do. Post a price list in your kitchen of what you're willing to charge for doing your kids' chores for them. Then, if a chore isn't done at the agreed-upon time, no problem. You just happily do the chore and charge them for your services. I'd advise you to pick charges that really do make you happy. Don't skimp. Take the trash bins out to the street could incur a $10 charge. Or how about picking up that dog poop? $10 or maybe $20. Cleaning the dishes, making beds. When you actually do a chore, I'd recommend posting a note or keeping a log somewhere that a snarky teen can't rip up if they're mad. When it comes time to do the budget, add the deductions for what I call mommy chore charges to the other monthly deductions. If they want to earn as much income money as possible, they will quickly learn to keep their mommy chore charges to a minimum or to do one of mommy's chores to even out the deduction before the next pay period. Cars for high schoolers. Just a side note, no one should be buying their high schoolers cars, much less new cars. If they really need access to a car and you can afford to get one, Find an older model car that's not classy and buy it as a family car. We had grandpa's old car for one boy and their aunt's car for another. A Toyota Corolla that's eight years old was not what my kids wanted to drive, but both of them got around until they could afford to buy their own cars. I also want to make another side note in that if you can have your kid drive early as possible after 16 years old before they're 18, do it. Kids learning to drive early are safer drivers than kids learning to drive after they're away from at college or beyond. Now, getting back to budgeting. (laughs) Step four, you want to get back to the budget and calculate the money needed to cover the income and deductions in step two and three. 
transfer that electronically to your child once a month. I would have my kids balance their checkbooks by hand before they got their next month's money so that they could see the money come and go. They did switch to online balance watching after a few years, but their first years were with an old-fashioned paper checkbook balance, and it was a good exercise. Sort of like how we all learned long division, but now we always use calculators, right? Okay, step five. Sit back and watch them use their money. If they forget to pay their tutor or music teacher, great, that teacher will help them learn to pay their bills on time. If the instructor tries to get the money from you, I'd just redirect them back to your kid and explain that this is a learning process. If they bounce a check, great, nothing like learning how much bouncing a check costs. Whatever you do, don't get overdraft protection for their account. One dad did that and was only charging his son $25 instead of the bank's $35 fee, and his son didn't blink an eye. We need to get our kids to blink and look the payment monster in the eye. This is real stuff, so make it feel real. These are all affordable mistakes that you can give them love and empathy for whenever they happen. Now, on the other hand, if they manage to save extra in areas of their budget, that they decide they'd like to use the money elsewhere, great. Say you give them money for two lunches a week, and they decide to make their lunch all the days of the week with the food that you have at your house. Let them pocket the extra to encourage their saving habits. Remember how in adult life we have to save for a vacation or a new car? These balancing activities will help plant those saving seeds in their brains that they'll use later on when purchases really do need to be saved for over a long period of time. Okay, you're ready to launch. Those were the five steps. I do have a few more comments on money and teens. One area I want to encourage is for all parents to allow and promote the idea that their kids should earn money by having a part-time job while in high school. I know, I know, there are lots of parents in Silicon Valley where I live who feel that doing homework and school is a job for their kids, so they refuse to let their kids work outside the home. However, doing homework doesn't prepare them for all aspects of the real world, and I want you to help them get those extra skills. Crummy, low-wage jobs are such an amazing place to learn all sorts of life lessons that are never, ever taught in schools. Having to punch a time clock on a schedule that your boss only tells you one week in advance and one that changes just about every week? Getting a real paycheck. Do you auto-deposit or not? Dealing with taxes. Getting tipped or not tipped. They start learning how it feels to not get tipped, even though they've been doing a great job. Dealing with coworkers that you didn't choose, ones that gripe and don't work hard, are tough to be with. My one son didn't have much time between his academics and athletics, but he managed to get a weekend-only job at a local burger joint. It was a godsend if you ask me. He learned all about those things and more. Dealing with cleaning tables and taking customer orders? Priceless. Did you know that when we walk into a place like that, we often ask a 16-year-old, what's good on the menu? It was so funny. Kids that age are amazed that anyone would bother to think that they might know the answer. Precious lessons in building confidence and self-esteem. Please, please let your child work. College finance ideas. Lastly, I want to make a few comments to those of you who have college kids or will soon. You need to practice these budgeting things, but scale it up even further. Have your kids pay all their own bills. Yep, even tuition and room and board if they are going away. Agree ahead of time what you're willing to pay for and when you will be transferring money to them. In my practice, I see too many parents just opening up their wallets whenever their kids call to say they're out of money. I want to encourage you to set the limits up front and use empathy when they run out of money. If you've set up their high school budgeting experience appropriately, this will not be hard or a surprise. My boys knew in advance that they paid for all their own entertainment and eating out with money they earned from their summer jobs or jobs they had during the school year. I think having a limit for food spending is a really wise idea as well. Freshmen in dorms are usually required to buy a food plan, 
If they have a food plan, in my opinion, that means they have food even if it's not the best. If they'd like to eat out, fine, it's on their dime. One of my friends could see her son's bank account draining down and he only had $5 left in it at one point. What a bummer! He wound up getting an on-campus job to help even things out. Another friend wound up just paying for dorm food that her child wasn't eating, in addition to all the food her child ate out. Crazy, isn't that? Picky eaters can have a tough time in college, but at this stage, it's their problem, and they need to navigate it, not mom and dad. Last topic, credit cards. It is important for our kids at some point to start building up credit for future purchasing power. I'd say as they go off to college is the time to research a good card for them and encourage them to start by choosing one type of purchase that they will always pay for on their card and then pay off every month. There are lots of companies who will offer student cards that have really high interest rates that kids can get into trouble. Avoid those and shop around. Learning to deal with money can be an amazing journey and allow our kids to have choices when they manage money well. You being in their lives, communicating, and allowing for mistakes in loving ways is what's going to get your kid into the right place. They will blow it occasionally. Embrace those times with a growth mindset and love them through the process. Whatever your child's age, please take the time to work with money. If you found this information useful, please forward the podcast link on to friends and family. That's all for now. Take care and be safe. Have a blessed rest of your day.